Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, Airbus has just become the world's biggest aircraft manufacturer. What stopped them from completely eating up Boeing, now that Boeing is kind of down and under because of the 737 MAX crisis? How does it actually work if you want to go and buy an Airbus 320 today? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with one of my new favorite apps, which is Blinkist. Now, I'm betting that you are watching this video because you're like me. You want to learn new stuff all the time. And that way, when you walk past the bookstore, I certainly do, I look at all of those kind of non-fictional books thinking, I would love to have the time to read all of those, but I just cannot find any time to do so. This is where Blinkist is genius, right? They've had people reading through all of those non-fictional books, kind of condensing them down to the essentials, what those books are really about, and then they're delivering it to you in kind of an audiobook format, which you can listen to in about 15 to 20 minutes. So you can get the gist out of all of those books, which means you can consume an enormous amount of books and knowledge. Now, the first 100 of you who are quick enough to use this link will get one week absolutely for free with Blinkist where you can check it out and see if what I'm telling you is true. And you'll also get 25% off the membership fee after that week. So go down, click it, and let's start learning. Right, so the news last autumn uh, was that Airbus had for the first time overtaken Boeing as the, air, the world's biggest aircraft manufacturer. Now this obviously stands on the back of the 737 MAX catastrophe that Boeing is still reeling from. They, um, Airbus had an enormous amount of orders last year. Boeing not so much. So what is actually stopping Airbus from just kind of stepping in, taking over control and creating a monopoly out of the current duopoly that the aircraft manufacturing world is? Well, it turns out there are a couple of things. Now, I'll be talking about three of those today. So the first is the absolute biggest one, which is the enormous backlog that already exists at both Airbus and Boeing. So during the during 2008, when the global recession hit, what happened was that the central banks all around the world started lowering interest rates. Okay? And with those lower interest rates, it became much cheaper for uh, the likes of you know, bigger airlines to buy new aircraft. Because remember, buying an aircraft is done to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. And of course, a small change in interest rate will make a huge difference in the costs of those airlines or the leasing companies that buy these aircraft. So during 2010 and the following decade, there was also a, a big shift in how people were traveling. So while the older generations tend to favor owning stuff, buying stuff, the newer generation, the millennials, are more interested in traveling, in in adventures. Now, those things combined made sure that the airlines realized that there's a huge potential for traveling. There's a huge potential for expansion. So let's use these lower interest rates and let's buy bucket loads of aircraft. And that's what they did. So during 2010 and the following decade, there was an influx of aircraft orders that have never been seen before. It's been the absolute biggest decade ever in aircraft manufacturing history. But the problem then becomes that there are so many orders, but it takes a long while for an aircraft manufacturer like Boeing, but also like Airbus, to manufacture these aircraft. At the moment, Airbus is, uh, is increasing their capacity. They have four centers where their uh, they're final assembly lines lies now. It's of course Toulouse, which is their home base. It is Hamburg in Germany, it's Tian, Tianjin in China, and it's Mobile Alabama in the US. And they're trying to churn out as many Airbus 320s as possible. Because 
the major, the big bulk of all of these orders were for the single aisle Airbus 320-321. But while they're doing this, they can still only muster to get out about 65, 63, 65 aircraft a month. And because of the past decade, their orders, the orders that they need to fulfill, is about 6,600. Okay, so this means that if you go into Airbus today and say, hi, uh, I won the lottery, I would love to buy myself a brand new Airbus 320 with all of the little nits and gadgets in it, when can I get it? Airbus will say, that's great, we're going to be looking at different engine alternatives for you. Um, 2029, it'll be yours. And you'll say, but that's in nine years, I want to go now. And they'll say, Unfortunately, that's not possible. In order for you to do that, you're going to have to lease an aircraft in from someone or solve it some other way. We cannot give you an aircraft until in about nine years. Okay. Now here lies, of course, the big issue with switching orders from Boeing because Boeing has a similar backlog. They also have thousands of jets on in the backlog, but if you want to switch your order, if you want to cancel your 737 MAX order and switch it over to an Airbus, well then you will become in the back of the line. While if you're in the line for a MAX, at least you know when that MAX is going to arrive. Okay? The fact that it's grounded now um, will have an impact. It does have an impact on many, many airlines today. But if you are delayed one year, it's still better than being delayed nine years. So this is the huge difference. This is why Boeing's customers are not just rushing over to Airbus. It will, however, mean that Airbus is securing future orders, which means that they will be able to continue to grow as Air Boeing might have to kind of slip down a little bit. But this is also very important to remember. When you buy an aircraft, you pay a relatively small upfront fee. Okay. The bulk of the money is being paid when you get the aircraft. So this means that if you buy an aircraft now, or if you buy 50 aircraft now, you do have to pay some money. But if there is a change in the economy, if the economy slumps, if something happens, if uh, uh, flight shaming becomes a real big thing or um, something else, a big war or something breaks out, you can cancel those orders and the only thing that you would have lost is that down payment that you've made, right? So this means that even if there are thousands of aircraft on order, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, um, that the aircraft manufacturers can bank all of that money, okay? So there is a way, there's definitely a way for Boeing to come back once the 737 MAX is up and running again, they can probably give discounts to their more loyal customers and they can start wheeling in orders again and kind of um, fix this lost year that 2019 was for Boeing. So that's number one, the backlog. And on top of that, Airbus have also had problems on actually delivering on the schedule that they put up. So while they have said that they're going to deliver 63 aircraft per month, they've actually had problems with that. And of course now, with the outbreak of the coronavirus, they've had to shut down the production line in Tianjin, which means that, that the 63 is probably going to drop to even less than that, which will further delay the deliveries of existing customers. And this has been a real, real issue. Uh, this summer in the Paris Air Show, where Willie Walsh went out and bought new 737 Maxes, even though they were still grounded, he actually cited the, uh, the delays in Airbus delivery as one of the reasons why he stayed and wanted to expand his relationship with Boeing rather than with Airbus. So the customers are not happy with the delays that are coming out of Airbus. Okay, the second reason. Uh, the second reason has to do with type ratings of pilots and training of engineers and spare parts. So if you are an existing Boeing customer and you're flying the next generation jets, the ones that I am flying, and now you have bought loads and loads of 737 MAX aircraft, you probably did so because Boeing promised you that you wouldn't have to train your pilots more than a, a, an iPad course, and then those pilots would be able to jump straight into the 737 MAX and fly on them. Okay. Now, what's happened in the last few months is that the FAA and Boeing themselves have come out and said, well, 
it's likely going to be a little bit of simulator training. All right. That's a big downside for Boeing. Boeing is not happy with that. Um, but still, it's probably only going to be one or two sessions that will be required, which is the pilots being taken offline one to two days. And that's what we are doing anyway. So we're doing recurrent training as part of our yearly training cycle as pilot. And if the airlines have access to a 77 MAX simulator, that training could be done as part of the biannual pilot training. So it still wouldn't net any, any losses for the airline, All right, at least not significant ones. But if the airline would be so frustrated with the 77 MAX grounding that they decide, no, I'm going to stop my orders for Boeing, I'm going to go Airbus instead. Well, then it's a whole new ball game. It means that all of the pilots that will now fly on the new Airbus rather than the Boeing will have to go in and do what's called a type rating course. Now, a type rating course consists of some ground school where you learn all of the systems of the aircraft. And then on top of that, you have to do some quite serious simulator training where you learn how to operate the aircraft safely, how to deal with all the malfunctions. And then at the end, there's a skill test where you actually get that rating into your license. That process for trained pilots takes between one and a half to two months to do. And if you are an airline and you have to take half of your fleet or pilots offline for two months while you still have to pay them while they're doing their retraining onto the um, to the new type, that is an enormous cost. And on top of that, you have to retrain your engineers, you have to restock with spares for a new aircraft type. And if you are going to be operating with both Airbus and Boeing, you now have two different engineering teams, you have two different teams of pilots, two different sets of simulators needed, and the complexity and the cost just goes on and on and on. And this is the reason why the uh, Boeing, the existing Boeing customers that are watching now this 77 MAX debacle going on for a year, stretching into one and a half year, that's why they're not just jumping ship over to Airbus, because they know that the 77 MAX is likely to be certified, might take more months than they were hoping for. Uh, but at the end, the MAX will be flying. The pilots will be trained onto the MAX and it will have a financial impact, but not as great as it would be if they just switched over to a completely new aircraft type. So this is what you have to understand, right? It is not easy to make a switch from one aircraft type to another. But once again, if you are a new airline or you're an existing airline that is thinking about expanding into a new type of operation like long haul, for example, well, in that case, there's nothing stopping you from choosing Airbus over Boeing when it comes to this new operation, because that will incur these kind of training costs and these kind of engineering costs anyway. And this is obviously where Boeing stands a big risk at the moment. That is that the, the airlines are losing confidence in them and that they will for the future orders for future market share that they will start losing on that. And that is a real risk, right? Number three, and here is where the trade wars are coming in. Here is where the tariffs are coming in. So, so little known to the public is the fact that Airbus very recently lost a, uh, a court battle that's been going on for about 15 years when it comes to illegal state aid. Uh, the World Trade Organization decided on in favor of Boeing here. Where they said that, yes, Airbus has received unfair state aid and it allowed Boeing and America to impose tariffs on Airbus for Airbuses that are being imported into the United States. This is one of the reasons why uh, Airbus is now increasing the production rate in their mobile Alabama uh, factory, because uh, Airbuses that are being manufactured inside of the United States are not being affected by these tariffs. But trade wars, tariffs, are a huge obstacle to, um, to changes when it comes to big aircraft orders. Because if you impose a 10% tariff, I'm just taking that out of the air, but let's say it's a 10% tariff. If you put a 10% tariff on an aircraft that's costing $120 million, that's a huge increase in costs. And the airlines are very, very keen to keep their costs down. This is one of the reasons why the Airbus 320neo was so effective, because it was about the same price. I think it was a little bit more expensive than the 737, but of course it was extremely, extremely efficient and much cheaper to operate. So 
cost is a huge deal and these trade wars that's happening, these tariffs that are being imposed, obviously makes, as it always does, the markets more rigid, less prone to big changes. And this is also a reason why Airbus just, just can't kind of step in and take over the market. So what will happen in the future then? Well, um, it's very, very hard to say. Okay, um, it's definitely been a very, very bad year for Boeing. Um, and Boeing is suffering from a loss in confidence. And this is a significant issue when it looks into the future. So Boeing is going to have to, most likely, start looking into developing of new aircraft types. And this is why the, the 777X and the, the kind of success of the 777X is so crucial for Boeing. Because it's a way for them to show that, yeah, we are still the good old aircraft manufacturer, the reliable aircraft manufacturer that we've always been. This is a side note. We will be working on improving what caused this, but you can rely on us. And if Boeing can be seen to do that, if they can come with new innovative designs um, that will please the markets and will please the airlines, well then I don't think that this necessarily is going to be more than a huge hiccup for Boeing. But if they don't, if they keep trying to, to use all aircraft types to not come with any innovation and if the 737 MAX debacle continues, well then um, their, their the kind of reputational risk to Boeing is huge and Airbus will step by step, take over more and more of the market. As they can increase their delivery schedule, as they can increase the amount of factories they have, if they can take market share, they will. So we might see Airbus starting to become more and more dominant. That's possible. But we've also seen that in the duopoly that exists at the moment, where you have Airbus and Boeing, they have been kind of overtaking each other more and more, depending on what kind of aircraft types that they can churn out. So if Boeing comes with something completely revolutionary, well then they might be very quickly finding themselves back on top again. Now that's what I had guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell if you like this kind of content. Now, let's head over to the Mentor Aviation app. All right. I always do that after my release of my videos so that I can discuss what you think about the episode, if you have any questions to follow up on it, or if you just want to hang out with other aviation enthusiasts, it's a great place to do so. So let's head over to the app, have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right, guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.